Blimey, woman, do you have to sew this aggressively? You'll have to forgive me at some point. It might as well be now. We didn't know he was blind. At least we saved him. Surely that counts for somewhat. You let me believe you were a hero, when actually all you did was to abuse a poor blind man, steal his cane, and let him wander into traffic. Well, if you're not going to forgive me, can you hurry up with this face mask? The bus comes in ten minutes. I'm doing as fast as I can. No, no, no. You have the slogan for the advert at the top, then the picture, then the phone number. Everyone knows that. OK, so it's slogan on top, phone number at the bottom, and the picture of your stick in the middle. It's not a stick. I've told you. It's an SDED, a social distancing enforcement device. It just looks like a stick in the picture. It won't with the slogan above it. People will automatically associate the words with the image. First rule of advertising, that is... Buy an S dead, don't get dead dead. Catchy, isn't it? Now hurry up with you. If I'm going to the supermarket, I've got to get to that bus stop. Oh, right then. How's that looking? Perfect look. Well done. I'll just get it on my face. Now then, can you clearly see the phone number? Yes, but I don't know why you had to use the landline number and not your mobile. I can't use the mobile, can I? Imagine if someone sees the advert on bus, calls the number expecting to get through to head office of S-Dead Industries Limited, and the bloke they're sitting next to answers the call. No, they'll need to ring here, and you'll need to make it sound professional. I suppose so. I'll be on the bus in just a few minutes, and people will be looking at me with considerable interest, I shouldn't wonder. So you need to be ready by the phone for when it starts ringing. What am I going to say when they call? I've written a script for you. All you have to do is follow it. But what if they don't say what the script says they're going to say? You just stick to the script, no matter what they say, and you'll be fine. Right then, I've got to go. Oh dear. Oh, blinking neck. Look who's at bus stop. Dan, that's all I need. Oh, hello Keith. What's that on your face mask? It's called product placement, Dan. It looks like a picture of a stick to me. It's not a stick, as you well know. I do know that thing got me arrested, that I did. Keep it down, will you? These people are my potential customers. I take it Gracie sewed the ad on your mask. She did. Bit wonky, isn't it? Wonky? Aye, well, it probably reflects her current attitude towards me. Sharon's a bit spiky. She mostly ignores me these days. How were we to know he was blind? I know. It was an heroic act, though, wasn't it? We still saved that man. We did. They're being most unreasonable. Oh, we'll just have to find a way out of their bad books, I suppose. I thought we can. Because right now, my life's a living hell. Ah! Get off me! Give it back! They've got my purse! What's going on at the back? Those two lads are robbing that old woman. It's Mrs. Potts. Oh, no, they're going to get off the bus with a purse. Oh, no, she's chasing after them. She could land herself in right trouble here. Hey, I don't really want to say this, but this might be a way to get back on good books with the wives. It might be a way to get us killed. Or be heroes. Oh, bum and neck. Come on, then. Out of the way, Mrs Potts. Leave this to us. Oh, sorry, Mrs Potts. You hooligan, you push me over. Come on, love. Let me help you up. Sit on that bench there and we'll come back for you. Help! Help! Are you not listening to me? Go on, Keith. They're getting away. Come in! Come on, we're losing them! Oh no, where have they gone? They went that way. What, down there? Aye. Oh, we got them now, it's a dead end. Come on, let's confront them. Are you sure that's a good idea? Look, remember why we're doing this? Peace and harmony at home. Who are you more afraid of, those two or the wives? No, all right then, come on. They're stuck against that wall. We're just going to walk right up to them. Well, what else are we going to do? They've got their hoods up. They mean business. Are you sure this is a good idea? Now be smart, lads. Drop the purse. What if we don't? That's a good question, Dan. What happens if they don't? Because if you lads don't hand it over, we'll come over and get it off you. Come any closer and we'll punch your aging lights out. Right, Keith. I'll take the one on the left, you take the one on the right. I can't. Why not? Social distancing. You what? Two metres, Dan. We can't be too careful at our age. Oh, blue minute, Keith. Well, what do you suggest we do now? Well, have either of you two got symptoms? You what? A persistent cough or high temperature. I don't think so. Have you, mate? Well, I, I had a bit of a cough last week, but it's gone now. Are you satisfied now, Keith? Oh, all right. Right, three, two, one. <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, they got away. I suppose at least we tried. Not a total failure. Luke, a purse. Well done, Keith. Come on. We should probably get it back to Mrs. Potts. 
Hey, up. What's going on over there? He looks like one of those radio broadcast fans. It's Barmydale Radio. They're interviewing Mrs. Potts. Oh, this is very good news. When the old dear tells them how we fought off our assailants, we'll be right in the good books with the wives. Sharon's always got Barmydale Radio on in background. She's bound to hear it. Grace, you might start cooking my dinner again after she hears this. I might not have to sleep on the sofa anymore. You know what? It'll be even better if we return the purse to her live on air. Oh, I like your thinking, Keith. I like it. Hello? Gracie, have you got Barbydale Radio on? No, pet. A couple of masked thugs have robbed that Mrs Potts who lives in the nursing home. They dragged her off the number 22 bus just around the corner. 22? My Keith was catching that bus. My Dan was on that bus as well. Here, I'll turn it up. Did you get a good look at them, Mrs Potts? They were a ripe pair of ne'er-do-wells in masks and everything. <laughs> What is it, Mrs. Potts? It's them, the masked robbers. They're threatened to call back for me. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to try and get an interview with the robbers. You there, you're live on radio. Did you rob this sweet dear old woman? You what? We're bringing her purse back, aren't we? So no. So, you admit the purse is stolen? Of course it's stolen. How else would we have it? So talk me through your thought process. What exactly were you thinking when you got on the bus this morning? I am glad you asked me that question. I was just focused on trying to make some extra income. Well, I'm shocked that a man of your age could so casually confess such a crime. Since when is having an entrepreneurial spirit a crime? How can you call your actions entrepreneurial spirit? You're a sick man. No, turn it off. Turn it off. I can't believe it was them. Why not? They've stabbed a bloke, stolen a cane off a blind man and blown up number 55. I can believe it. And I'm going to kill him. Ow! Ow! Stop hitting us, Mrs. Potts. It wasn't us. Put your own bag away. It was you. It was you. Cowards hiding under your face masks. Everyone's wearing them now, aren't they? You've got one on. Ow! Ow, Keith, come on. Not now, Dan. I'm under attack here. Ow! Get two metres, woman. The police are coming. They think it was us. They can't take this mental woman seriously. It was all broadcast to the town. We're leaving suspects now. We'll have to run for it. Oh, bloomin' heck. Quick, in here. Here we go. Two chairs, two mugs, one kettle, and a radio. Oh, very romantic. Right then, so your plan is we hide out in the allotment shed until the heat dies down. It was your idea to run. Well, sitting in here isn't running. At least no one will think of looking here. Look, let's assess the options. One. Stay in this shed until we die. Not appealing. Two, grab the passports and the wives, and then we fly to the Cayman Islands. Gracie and I are not seeing out the rest of our days with you and Sharon in Cayman Islands, under no circumstances. Besides, there's no travel allowed now, is there? Three, we go to the police, we explain there's been a misunderstanding. Well, they might believe us, we might walk away heroes. Walk away heroes? They might want to know why we ran off from a live interview on radio. And it won't take much digging before they find out about the stabbing and the blowing up of number 55. Not to mention what we did to that blind fella. No, if we're getting out of this, we need to think of a way to prove our innocence. Turn it up. And now for some breaking news. The Barmydale Muggin suspects are still on the run. The message to them from the police is to hand themselves in or face a longer sentence. Miss Marjorie Potts, the victim of the attack, has been safely returned to Barmydale Nursing Home. She has identified her attackers as both wearing face masks. One of them is particularly distinctive as it sports a picture of a long stick in the middle. The mask contains a threatening slogan police believe is from a gang calling themselves the Esteds that reads, buy an Estead, don't get dead dead. Police are urging the public not to bow to such threats and avoid purchasing an Estead at all costs. Oh, blow my neck, turn it off, Dan. That's my whole business gone to pot. Oh, forget your business, Keith. We're in big trouble here. I know that, don't I? I'd take that face mask off. It'll incriminate us both. I'm not taking it off with this virus going round. I'll turn it inside out. Right, we need a plan, Keith. It's time for that scheming mind of yours to make good. Already got one. We wait for nightfall, then break into Mrs Potts' nursing home. Oh, brilliant. Let's add breaking and entering to charge sheet. You can't just walk through the front door of a nursing home these days, can you? We need to get in, talk to Mrs Potts, and explain how she's got us mixed up with those two other fellas. Once she sees she can trust us, she'll tell police we're innocent. 
Well, I might regret saying this, but under the circumstances, it's not a bad idea. That window up there's open. Hold your hands out and give me a lift up. Why do I have to lift you? You go through the window head first then. All right, all right. Put your back into it, I can't reach. I'm in. Now what? Well, obviously I see if I can find her. Ah! Oh, mission accomplished. Stop hitting me, Mrs. Potts. I've got your purse. Leave my purse alone. I'm returning it to you, you stupid woman. Now listen, I'm going to very gently and sensitively remove my face mask so you can see my smile and know that you can trust me. You see? Covid spreader, murderer! Oh, oh, blinking it! Nice one, Keith. Get two meters, you hooligan! I could have you stopped it to me. Get off me, woman! Dan, Dan, abort, abort! I'm coming out. Catch me! No, I'm not catching you. You'll have to. Ah! What kind of a catch was that? Well, I broke your fall, didn't I? Oh, help me up! Oi! The security guard is coming. Let's get out of here. Where are we running to now? I don't know. <laughs> is that security guard still following us? It is. I can see his torchlight. I'm not sure I can run much further. I mean, either. Into the church hall. We can hide behind a gravestone. A gravestone? That's a bit creepy, isn't it? Well, have you got a better idea? No, oh, come on then. <sighs> Here lies Edith Cummings. Born 1901, died 1997. A passionate golfer who finally got her all in one. Blimey. Makes you think, Dad. About what? Life. What it's all about. I mean, here we are, recovering from a punch-up with a couple of teenagers, on the run from the police and the security guard of a nursing home, and staring down the barrel of a jail sentence. I only left the house for a couple of addock and some toilet paper. Oh, shut up, Keith. He's on to us. He's standing in the graveyard with his torch. Keep your head down. I hope we did it. He's carrying on running. Oh, thank goodness for that. <sighs> that was a close one. Come on. Thanks, Edith. R.I.P. Pet. Hold on, wait a minute. He's running back over the other way. Come on, quick, quick, hide. Back again, Edith. Hope you don't mind us sitting on you like this. Oh, shut up talking to that dead woman. Hang on. He's running past. He's being chased by two youths on bikes. They're chucking stones at him. Yobs. There's those two thieves who stole Mrs. Potts's purse. Aye, it isn't all. Oh, they seed him off. Now they're leaving the bikes against the fence. And now they're chucking stones at the bell tower. Call the police. It's a disgrace. I'm not calling the police, am I? Mind you, you may have hit on something here, Keith. How do you mean? Well, the police are looking for someone with a very distinctive face mask that has a stick on it, aren't they? Aye, mine, obviously. That's why I'm here hiding behind Edith Cummings' deceased. Oh, so think a minute. One of them has got a bag hanging off the handlebars. We need to plant your distinctive Estead face mask in it, along with Mrs Potts's purse. Then all we need to do is get the police to nick them. How are we going to do that? When was the last time you rode a bike? Eh? After we plant the purse and the mask on them, we steal the bikes. Get them to chase us and we can lead them all the way back into the hands of the police. I like your thinking, Dan. But we'll have to crawl over there to those bikes without getting noticed. And neither of us have ridden a bike like that before. What kind are they? BMXers. Come on. While they're distracted, keep low. Open the bag as quietly as you can and put Mrs Potts's purse and your face mask into it. Purse is in and... I've swapped my mask with his. Right then, hop on and pedal to the metal, old man. Oi, you two. We've got your bikes if you want them. Hey, give them back. They're chasing us. Perfect. Did they pick the bag up on the way? He did. He's got it. Plan's working like a charm. Oh, I know they're taking a shortcut down the alley. They're going to try and cut us off on Arlington Lane. Oh, we'll have to go through the gardens and down the steps. You're joking. That's going to take a triple axle somersault. I've only been a BMX rider for one minute. No choice, Keith. Oh, blinking heck. <gasps> nice one, Keith. 9.9. 9.9? That was a perfect 10, that was. Just made it through ahead of them. They're still on the tail. 
you better call the police down and tell them we're bringing them in. Is that Barmadale Police Station? Yeah, we're bringing in those two lads who stole Mrs. Potts's purse. Be ready outside your front door. We'll be there in two minutes. Will they be waiting for us? I oh, don't worry about that. Worry about the half pint triple foul call you're going to have to do over that fence. Oh, bum and heck. Oh, it's got a knack of my back, this is. Are they still behind us? They are. And ready to run straight into the boys in blue, Dan. Here we go. Here you go, officers. One delivery of two dangerous criminals. And if you look in their bag, you'll find all the evidence you need to put them away for a very long time. And who are you two? We're the blokes who called you about these two scallywags. How do we know that? We're the ones who made the phone call. About them. All of you. Inside. Oh, great plan, Dan. This interview is being conducted by me, Sergeant Linklater. And me, Constable Cairns. The interview is now being recorded and anything you say may be used as evidence against you at a later time. Please state your names and addresses for the record. Dan Parker. Pub Landlord, Flat Cap and Ferret. Keith Meadows, 46 Dale Lane. Where were you on the morning of June 12th, 2020 at 10.40am? Do you mean this morning? Yes, this morning. Why didn't you say so? I have to give the date for clarity. There's nothing as clear as saying this morning. All right, then. Where were you this morning at 10.40am? We were just getting on bus, weren't we, Dan? We were, Keith. And that's when you accosted Mrs Potts, wasn't it? And stole her purse. We never did. We know you did it. There's no point denying it. There's a point denying it if we didn't do it. But you did. You saw a vulnerable old woman and you took advantage, didn't you? No! You couldn't help yourselves, could you? It's who you are. You just had to terrorise her for no other reason than she's weak. You're both going down for a very long time unless you start talking. Confess to it and you might get a few years off your sentence. Hang on, I'm getting lost here. Which one of you is the good cop and which is the bad cop? We're both bad cops. Well, that doesn't seem fair, does it, Dan? It doesn't. Can they do that? Is that within the guidelines? We don't have guidelines on that. Blimey. You can't trust anything you see on the telly, can you, Dan? You can't, Keith. I must say, I am surprised at that Juliet Bravo. Shut up, the perrier. We've got Mrs Potts coming in for a line-up. She'll soon point a finger of justice in your direction. Right, Mrs Potts. These four thugs in front of you are the prime suspects in the case. Walk along the line, examining each of them carefully, and tell me which two you think robbed you. I don't know. They're all wearing face masks. Yes, but Mrs Potts, weren't they wearing face masks when they robbed you? Oh, right. Y- yes. Oh, oh I, I recognise this face mask. This one? The one with the stick? Yes, I, I remember he was wearing it when he pushed me over when I got off the bus and when he tried to accost me while the radio man was interviewing me. This isn't my face mask. Likely story, young man. It isn't. I'm telling you, these two grandads swapped it when they nicked our bike. Is that true? Is this mask with the stick on it yours? Definitely not, Sergeant. What does it say? An S dead? Never heard of it. Have you ever heard of such a thing, Dan? S dead? No. Are you certain? Because if this S dead face mask turns out to be one of yours, you could be going away for a very long time. No, Sergeant. I promise you. I've never heard of such a thing as an S dead. Not until this very night. And what about this lad's claim that you stole their bikes, did you? No requisitioned them in the course of conducting a citizen's arrest and luring them to this police station. For which, frankly, I expected a bit more thanks. Now listen up. We've got a filing cabinet full of very similar crimes that have taken place in the last few weeks. So answer me this, you lot. Where were you on April 22nd at 7pm, May 3rd at 9pm and May 10th at midnight? I don't know. Out and about. I can assure you that Dan and I were not out and about, officer. We were both obeying the lockdown guidance and we're in our respective homes with our respective wives. And your wives will verify this? Absolutely. What's the number? Barmydale 557261. Ask for Gracie. Is that Gracie? Excuse me? I think you're misunderstood. I just want to know where your husband was on the evening of April 22nd. Is there a problem, Constable? Put it on speakerphone. Oh, hang on. I've got it written down somewhere. Oh, yes. 
That's a good choice that you won't regret. And Ested is just the ticket for keeping you and your family safe. Constable, did she just say Ested? Gracie, Gracie, stop reading from the script. Just tell him where I was. We recommend a family pack, which will keep your whole extended family safe from coronavirus. Shut up, woman. Ignore what I told you. Just answer the man. Get your hands off the phone, sir. As we at Estead Industries like to say, buy an Estead. Don't get dead dead. Grab him, Constable. It wasn't me. I only went out to buy a couple of haddock. Book him, Constable. Oh, nice one, Keith. I'm licked again. You know where you can stick that stick of yours, don't you? What stick? I've never heard of a stick. Barmy Dale starred Juliet Hammond as Gracie, Camilla Simpson as Sharon, Stuart Wielden as Dan, Martin Skellen as Keith, Patrick Kozak and Elliot Rennie as the Thieves. The music was composed by Jordan Freighter and the show was written by Skellen and Wielden for Barmy Productions.